everything as you can see but um, mainly the um, back area and this area in the center not these uh, areas of the um, prairie it's um, cl um, clothony or clothony or however you say it um, prairie uh, on the Brecon Beacons um, on the uh, Welsh border um, good so that is soaked very nicely right the way down there okay now it was a very blue sky so I'm laying in that lovely blue sky and that is Prussian blue look at the way it rolls down isn't that fantastic I'm cutting in along the edge of there I'm going over that area there and I'm leaving that area there I like that little bit of rundown we'll probably lose it eventually but let's go with the flow let's hopefully that stays there that's it <coughs> and my logic behind what I'm, the, the, what I'm doing here will be revealed um, <coughs> hopefully as I paint um, because Notice how I'm bringing the sky over um, the um, foreground or middle distant buildings. Now there's a reason for that <coughs> that will be revealed very shortly. Now we've got a lovely splash of light across that area and I'm going to use raw sienna for that. There you go, look at that. Look at that lovely splash of light colour. In that center area then I'm going to use cadmium lemon to freshen that up in that foreground and that's gonna go either side like that look at, that. Look at the freedom this that, that you um, achieve when you're painting in this um, lovely medium of watercolor really really is um, outstanding good uh, just got to lift away a couple of areas that have run down so I've just lifted off moisture from the brush and I'm just lifting off colour can I even use uh, a little bit of this kitchen towel just to make certain that we don't get any run back it's not vital but something that there we go <clears throat> and it is very hot so I'm going to allow that to dry which won't take uh, many seconds really or minutes now it's not completely dry but um, I need to put in the distant hills just before it completely dries and for that I'm going to use cobalt blue touch of raw sienna mainly cobalt blue not too dark but just enough to get me a blue green let's go really blue with that there we are to start and that is that area across there the distant hills and it has dried which is fine uh, and in that case I've got to work fairly quickly now as I spread down cutting in around the building um, right now I'm adding a little more raw sienna to that work my way down and I'm not actually going to produce any detail in this it's vital in many ways um, that you don't have too much detail in um, in these areas um, not too much interest a little bit of dotting of interest there but nothing too much and because this brush points it's always a good idea to um, to put in some suggestion of trees but nothing too uh, nothing too clearly defined now this is where I'm beginning to cut in around chimneys central areas of the buildings and of course where that other hill crosses and there you go that's the roof of that building coming down there don't want lines to show so we're just blending while it's still damp 
and we come into the around that chimney there and all of a sudden you got yourself your distant hills now for the next area of hills that's that one there I'm adding a little more raw sienna like that and I'm going to add cobalt to that it will give me a, a, a different green um, not necessarily a more local green but um, and something just a little darker I think we'll blue up the top because it's quite high it, you know blue depicts height there we are see the way that's, that's look, see the way that's, that's running away into that area there beautiful love it love this uh, watercolour business right now if we're going with more blue a bit more yellow we can get some darker touches now and I'm leaving the odd patch of white light here and there because we may have a few trees on that outside edge Add more blue in there we go that's better just to denote the odd patch of trees on the edge one or two areas there See, don't want to go too dark I don't you know dark I'm not looking for too too dark areas in these uh, background colors just a hint there and then all of a sudden more blue just because there's one or two some wooded areas there I want them to show up right on the top in places particularly there and another little touch there where it gets dark Very, very dark in that area. That's pretty much it. We'll leave that to do its own thing. Now, while that is doing its own thing, I'm going to put some very light colour onto either side these more local um, parts of the uh, priory, and that's going to be light red. I use three colours for the stonework, light red and raw sienna, and I will put a blue with that, but to start with, let's just get that nice warm glow. Now that's what I'm looking for uh, in this stonework. I'm putting it in the shaded areas as well as the sunlit areas, just pull it right up into that. I'm going to have a dark tree there, so that's not going to affect that in any way I will be leaving some um, just even a tad richer and lighter here um, what have we got oh yes touch there I will be leaving some white paper in places um, touch there really got a lot of sunlight on this a bit of raw sienna around that arch of that uh, opening nice bit of raw sienna there and there one or two little touches there and of course this stonework has some real light areas so I'm leaving white paper in places and uh, that's all that gives that added feeling of of light that's in shade anyway running up there that's that's in strong sunlight so keep that there we go look at that this is in shadow so we're not too fussed over that um what have we got here a bit more gray a bit of blue in there a bit of cobalt in there now because oh and that's under the arch that'd be fine cobalt will go there. there's a figure there in actual fact it was my wife that I think um, should be included. A bit more blue. Oh, that's interesting. Um, a bit more blue there. Let's just try and get a little more blue 
into the mix. There we go. Just realised I haven't got my mic on, so apologies for the um, rather uh, the failure of uh, perhaps what you could hear. But anyway, we're back in action again, and we come down to there. There's an area there. That's it. That's all in shade. See how I've began, begun to get the light feel against the cooler background. And because I put blue on that, that will definitely set back. And this will come forward in pure sunlight. Always a good thing to do. Raw sienna there, sweeping across. Just blending that in that foreground. Brilliant. There's the first washers. Just one thing got to watch that I didn't put in from the original washers is that that building carries on there. So let's add more blue to that. Make that blue and light. Because you can see that building in the distance. You know, because that's the arch. So we can see the, um, the distance there. Um, yeah, that's fine. And we'll bring that right the way through. Because that's the grass that continues beyond there. Brilliant. There you go. Now I'm changing to a, a, a greener grey now for these buildings. Because they're sitting back but they've got a bit of punch to them. So I'm using raw sienna. Light red. And cobalt blue. To give me that green grey. So, there you go. That's more or less what I'm looking for. It's going to be bluey green grey, which is a funny colour to mix. But I think I've got it. Like that. Because that's for the roof areas, um, which is that area there. A little bit too green. A bit more red bit more blue that's better look at that see how that affects that darkens that up and I'm actually pick no I'm going to paint funny enough right the way over those areas there and they are dormer windows that's going to be painted right over and then we've got the corner of that building coming back not going to Worry about the chimneys, bead of light on top of the roof. That roof comes down there like that. So we've got that old grey sort of tile roofing that we see in this part of the Welsh borders. There we go. And this one, going to have a little more yellow and a tad more water. Because it's going to be slightly lighter. Like that. I think I'm happy with that. May need to be darker than that shortly, but anyway, let's see. That's the top of that. See, immediately that comes into sunlight, doesn't it? You know, it, it's all about lights and darks, really. Um, which, um, I don't see that passing across the top there in places into that where that chimney is there. So. And that's the top of the um, of that area. And this one is the same. Adding a bit more blue to this one. Just to ring the changes. Like that. And that continues through down to there. And that creates that roof there. Good. A bit more yellow. Now. To create this wall and in actual fact it's got a lot more blue in because you're still using those same three colors delicately mixing those but this is quite dark so I'm using more blue and more red to pick up this wall there 
So a little on the grey, on the green side, so a bit more red, a bit more blue. That should give me the desired colour I'm looking for. That's better. Warm stone colour, that's what I'm looking for. Look at that. More red, more blue, and away you go. Stone colour. Just what I did see on that day that we visited. This lovely old priory. Well worth a visit if you're in the area. Always uh, well worth a visit. Okay, so that's that. That's that. Just trying to work out what is what here. Alright, there you go. This is also that stone work. There like that. Uh, no, it should not be too big. You notice how I'm not being too fussy with the actual drawing. I want it to be loose. I want it to be impressionist. And if you add too much uh, detail, then unfortunately, uh, a bit more blue now, just to ring the changes, as it were, onto that area. Like that. It's a matter of blocking in really, that's all I'm doing here at the moment. Trying to preserve the sunlit areas using the point of that brush. There we are. And there is a area right in the centre that I'm mixing up a real strong blue, which is there. I'm gonna make that completely dark. It isn't. But I'm going to make it dark because when you paint, you can do more or less what you want to enhance the feel of art. And I think I've got that there. That's it. That's good. There is a roof area in front of that. A bit more yellow going in here because there's a little bit of yellow glow on that roof there. And then we've got these this overhanging bush that will be painted in later it really is some um, and then we're going dark again more blue for the wall there like that and is there a window there well i know there was some barrels that are waiting to be taken into the cellar the overhang there so we might as well leave just a little bit of interest going on there, people leaving up to um, the um, viewers as to what they feel that is. Yes, that's looking quite healthy actually. Now I'm going to paint in these steps. Just simply treated, see that? Very simply treated. Um, Good. I think we need a bit of time just to analyse this before we go any further. Well, we've got this far. Um, it is very, very hot in here. And um, I'm going to allow that to completely dry. I'm going to have a coffee. Well, now I've pulled in just a little closer, um, purely to be able to... Um, um, show you the, uh, the the finer details really that I'm going to put onto um, the um, uh, the centre of the building. Um, <clears throat> let me just see what we need. Um, need a slightly smaller brush, so I'm going to use uh, a mop brush that points again, but considerably smaller. Um, bearing in mind this is a um, 22 by 15 sheet of watercolour paper. I'm thoroughly damping the brush. And, um, okay, now the mix. We're going to use um, Windsor Blue. I'm putting that in up the top there. Windsor Blue. Uh, with, we're going to use Indian Red. Because that, to me... I think it gives me the opportunity to suggest windows 
in a very, very simple form. There we go, another one there. So all I've done is put the panes of glass on really. Clean the brush. <clears throat> now we're looking for a little bit of green. So into that blue, grey, I'm going to paint in the sunlit grasses, a little bit of Windsor Blue with Cadmium Yellow just to create that nice sunlit sort of green in that position and I'm actually going to take that right the way through to there because that is a very light piece of greeny grass that's showing in continuation of that area. Don't want to go too dark there. Good. <coughs> so that's that. Now, I'm going to use Olizarin Crimson. Now, Olizarin Crimson just lightly because I want to fill in there is some lovely sort of um, more or less orangey so I'm going to put a little bit of um, cadmium yellow with that as well just to pick up that little bit of light sort of more or less copper beach colour really that's overhanging there like that then I'm just going in with the Windsor Blue into that area because that is going to be dropped in to create a real dark shaded area there we go see that how dark and shaded that is and that is going to be of benefit later on when we come to paint the rest of it really so a lovely fern of glow from that clean the brush again going in with cadmium again with a little prussian or windsor just for that shaded area there that grass area there and there again going in with the blue into the blue area to create the under color the under shadow um, that suggests grasses and I'm just going to drop a bit of that into there I'm not actually going to put any in there at this stage lovely I like the idea of that it all seems to be coming along very, very nicely now this is where the fun starts because I'm going to produce the very dark green overhanging uh, tree work here and I'm going to start off with a very very dark color and that finishes straight across the area there it's Windsor Blue Indian Red quite simple that mix and all I'm going to do is to create a fern of sunlight on this wall although it's in shadow it still needs a bit of sunlight to show the um, just comes down behind that wall there there we go now I'm adding a little bit of cadmium yellow to that now as it goes up into the, the what in is a, in effect is a slightly darker uh, or slightly um, a sunnier uh, light to the these trees and of course now I'm going to use more yellow as I get to the top I don't know whether you can quite see the, the distance in uh, the depth of change of colour but that's um, that is working quite well and once we get to the top there it may get too heavy at the top can you see the way you can still see that um, that hill coming from behind there and just use the point now just to take off 
take away one or two little overhanging branches. Now, take a little colour off the brush and just use cadmium yellow into that brush. See the way you're getting a, a lighter feel to this now. And then clean it. And just spread that up with a little bit of yellow on the brush. And it's just hanging on that edge there. And then it comes around the corner, slightly over that chimney, down the edge there, and it just hangs on that outer edge. It really gives that depth of colour, which really is what I'm trying to depict. It's all a matter of depth of colour really, just going to go a little darker there too, just as it overhangs. Change of tone makes all the difference. There you go. And that is how I'm going to treat those trees on the left hand side. Okay, so that's basically um, the, um, the tree work showing up the light hills and of course the center area there that's going to need, be needed to, uh, to to lay back but now comes the really interesting part that um, probably is um, the key to the whole painting really and what have we got here right we have shadow work here so I'm pulling that down and we need a little bit more light red in that. Let's try a bit more Indian red. Just want that to be warm. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. And of course the edge will be rather jagged because that's the edge of the uh, overhanging. And that goes round like that into that sort of area. There we are to get that arch. Got to get that arch in some form of clarity. There we go. Look at that. It's a lovely colour that to depict that old aged stone. And then it comes down there, right, then I'm going to add a little more water and a little bit more blue in that, just to show a bit more Windsor or Prussian. There we go. Then, of course, a little bit more water, a little bit more Prussian. Now, to show... Um, a bit of shadow work there. There we go. And this shadow work is slightly less intense. And of course we've got lots of bits and pieces going on there with the shadows. In other words, some of the brickwork is in shadow. Um, there is sort of like a, a shadow kind of coming across there and down there. We've also got another touch of shadow running down there which has got quite a jagged edge on it straight down there jagged down there so it breaks into the sunlight and then this is also quite dark in places so that's also in shadow begin to get the feel of light and dark on that uh, Lovely old stone. Brilliant. Love it. Really does, I think, capture that uh, feeling that of the day, really, that I saw um, when we stopped off at this lovely old priory. We only ran onto it, really. Um, we didn't really know... Um, the, um, that it was there, basically. Um, 
but of course it turns out that um, it was really a uh, gem of a place to visit and I would recommend to anyone that is in this area on the edge of the Welsh borders to Herefordshire the Brecon Beacons um, you actually p pop in and give it a look because to me it was well worth a visit ideal okay now a bit more red now going in the mix because I want to show some tones here that are considerably darker there and that finishes off and then it comes down at a little sort of a, a slivered area probably some form of uh, pillar there at some point um, always being aware that you don't want to lose that effect of sunlight that's why I put this light tone on first it um, it really does um, make the difference to the final outcome and try and pick up a bit of stonework within that area there that's good so it's Windsor blue and Indian red again I'm going to use and this time it's quite strong in tone because there's an area there there's a small wall there that finishes there and then you have another part there another small um, section there brilliant then we have some little touches there another little touch there it's all a matter of um, trying to um, envisage really the way this old these old buildings created their appeal with the shapes and forms and everything that uh, that's going on there and we also have some more little touches coming down there that's it and uh, that goes up there another little touch coming across there now here we go this is the foreground area that's also in shadow but this time going to add more Indian red to the mix because I want that to be a nice cool sorry a nice red tone nice warm tone to show up the stonework that's there there we go and that's got to come forward that's why I'm painting it in in this strong sort of warm tone but it does have light on the top as you can see I'm allowing light to um, to lay on the top of that it will be revealed once the shadow comes across but we have to be very patient with these um, when we paint these sort of areas um, always easy to to um, rush at certain colors and tones there we are and now we're adding more red again I want that to come forward oh and that is very dark there it's an area there that's extremely dark finishes there and that comes across I'm trying to use this large brush as much as possible because I want that to create a loose feel that's what I'm looking for don't need to have anything that's going to um, uh, 
really affect the uh, feeling of um, sunlight. Look at that. It's a nice bit of warmth, isn't it? Lovely. That finishes like that. And of course then we can then overwash now that's dry and touches of that into there. That then heads off like that. And then we can then use that for the lining of that, the way the brickwork lays. Can you see the way I'm creating the light on top of the brickwork? Stones actually, stonework. That's it. Beginning to look good. Good. It's all looking great fun here. Oh, everything seems to be coming along really well at this moment. Right. Now we're going to try and get some darker tone um, within, um, particularly that area there, because that's all in shadow, basically. Um, but it doesn't want to be as dark as that. But the way to show that is I'm going to use raw sienna now with light red. So raw sienna, light red. That's the colour I can see and that's the colour that I'm going to use. And we have a tone there like that. Tone like that. But to remember that this is in shadow but we can see reflected light that's the key to this one the fact that we've got reflected light and that is the reason why the stone has taken on that that light effect Just going over all of that area like that. There we are. You see, that gives the effect that you've got reflected light coming from across the um, from that building there. And then I'm going to add a little bit more cobalt and a little bit more light red to that just to indicate some, you know, there is some darker areas, there's quite considerable darker areas, but it's got to have a glow that quite often you see when you're painting or viewing this sort of subject, really. It, um, it is a reflected light feel. And I'm just now flicking in to try and pick up a feel of a little bit of stonework. One, two little light touches there, down the edge there, a bit more red into that, like that, and then I'm going to reflect that across there. Gradually building up tones that reflect each other. That really is the key to these paintings. We've got to be reflective of each other. If you can achieve that, you're sort of halfway there, really. So that reflects a bit of that. Bit of light there, bit of reflection there. light there then across this brickwork we've got some very light warm tones like that so that more or less sits the top of the stones there which I think gives it that lovely um, effect lovely light coming through now 
that's it now darkening up that area there leaving that area that area there that there there finishing on top of that area there and that is going to be darker as we get the light coming across from that good now <coughs> we go back in with the Windsor blue and the Indian red more blue this time because I'm going to create a really dark feel right now that comes under there like that and round like that so that picks up the arch it's in shadow inside it's an arch inside an arch then we have a little bit more red now because we've got another arch inside that arch I'll put a bit more blue with that soon have that a bit more blue it looks red but I think we'll um, state a bit more blue onto that that comes down like that and then a bit more red for the final part of the arch that sits just there and slides around there like that and chops down the back there. Yep, that's it. And of course we can line that now just so as we can get the effect of that archway like that. And now I'm going to use um, the light red, almost on its own really, to cast the light inside that there. Because that then gives a sense of light coming in to that part. Then we go dark again, a bit more blue in there, because We've got a figure here that we need to pick round and create a shape that is important because I did want a figure to be coming there. There is the figure standing there very nicely. It's walking along up the steps really. And we'll leave that at that. Good. Now we've picked up that, we've set that back into the depth of that um, 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 between the two buildings. Now I'm going to mix cobalt blue with a little of the olizarin because I'm now going to create the rest of the shadows. And this time I want the shadows to have a bit more warmth to them because they're coming forward. And the shadow areas are basically symbol really just those there like that just pull it down don't be too concerned about the overall look of it. it it will it will shine through the underpainting you have to make certain that you're not taking away any of the color underneath that's the key to this um, work. It really is so important that you don't take off the colour that's underneath. See, I've added more red to that. So a bit more water, a bit more blue. 
So vary it, get a nice variation. There we go. And just allow that to do its own thing. I'm always saying about allowing the paint to do its own thing. Never more so important than when you're coming to when you're painting these sorts of subjects. Adding more cobalt blue now. Quite a bit more cobalt. Because now I'm going to overpaint this area again. There we go. Over the arch. And down. The underpainting is always the key to this. Right, now we have that nice depth in the background. I think that's dry. Good. Now I've got to show these dormer windows. There's three dormers here. There's a hotel in the background. And there's three dormer windows that stand up. I've got a feeling it's the accommodation, um, which is apparently very nice. Only a small number of rooms, but um, I think uh, by all accounts, very, very nice. And there's just a little bit of that there, a little bit of extra light on some of the windows down that edge and across there let's show a little darker area there where that wall casts across there we are that's really sort of highlighted that um, to a quite a large extent also that gable end that could take another shadow oh and of course this overhang bit of overhang there and that little bit of window there yeah look good looks very good to me gonna make these chimneys just a little darker too because I think they would benefit from being a tone darker it's all a matter of, ba of balancing the subjects Darks against lights, lights against darks. Always um, a very interesting part of these um, of these paintings. And you've also got to allow things to dry back too. Now, I'm going in now with the Windsor Blue into the Cadmium. Um, or Prussian Blue. Into the, not the Cadmium, the... Indian red to create a warm a very warm tone that I'm putting in down that edge there down that edge there and there's just a small area that stands out like that and down that edge there you know it it's such a lovely medium watercolor then I'm adding Cobalt blue now into that and we're painting a subtle shadow because all of that is shadowing this this area here so you just pull that across like that and this is the key to this complete painting these lovely shadow areas that will enhance the foreground light on the on the wall here in the in the foreground like that and that now is going to come right the way across and into that area there so it's quite a large area and then we're just building in just taking off a little bit of color from this area I don't want that to reflect too much 
there we go look at that that's how it's that really seems to have worked just overlaying of colors really that makes these scenes um so so important um to get that light right um you know it was hit at first time but by building up color you can gradually create that feel and then we have a casting shadow from the wall like that and then it comes out like that and that then runs at a bit of a jagged edge up to there there we are right I've just put one or two little um, cool blue shadows there um, and but apart from that um, it's really the figure now I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush now for just for putting in the figure it's just a small pointed um, rosemary and co brush and the figure um, I'm going to use a little bit of burnt sienna for the skin tones for the more or less the face really uh, the arms touch of the arm there we can see and we've got um, ultramarine for the were there shorts or were there oh they're, they're, that's right they're jeans yep like that that's it and that comes up to there and then we have a handbag that um, is just a dark dark sort of not black but just dark really that um, comes across the shoulder like that and the bag just lays like that there we go I think we've got the general gist of that and we'll just pick up a little bit of detail running across there just soften that away as it's just a slight shadow where the figure's running walking down the steps there we are right another little touch of shadow we we are really heading towards the finishing touches now which as most of you know is um my favorite um part of most paintings really can you see where i've just um just sort of knock that just back just a touch right now no more detail on the background but we do need a lot of interest and by interest I mean dark tone for lining and a um, uh, little bit of touches here and there right first thing we're going to do is just mark mark out a little bit of the edging there we do have some brickwork there that stands out against that light area see how very dark that is how very strong the tones you need if you're going to um, be successful in creating even going darker on that outer on that edge there and that edge there too there we go now we're going to pick up some darker sections in the brickwork there to darker tones there it's all a matter of um, 
giving an impression of stonework really just got to remember that we do have um, just rub that away we do have um, very dark into that inside area there um, we do have a bit of perspective here so that's always something that um, we have to bear in mind when we um, are painting these sorts of uh, subjects and here we go again another stark section there and like a little area there with some little touch and bits and pieces touch and bits and pieces touch and bits and pieces I don't know quite what tone what um, that um, denotes when I'm saying that but it um, I'm just really working on what I can see um, and what I saw on the day really um, and very dark on the outside edge again uh, another dark area there and the brush is just running out of paint so I, I like that because it gives that sort of broken feel that sort of stone work feel that I think um, Use a finger too. There we go. And that should be working quite well that side. And then we do similar mix this side. Um, we've got, um, what have we got here? Ah, oh, a little bit coming out there. And this really is the, the real dark tone. You can see you, you get a real sense of light on that. And that's what we're looking to achieve more than anything. That sense of light. Within that stone area. There we are. See the real strength that we're getting there. Looking good. It is looking good. Good, picking up a little darker tone now. And all I'm using here is Indian Red and uh, Windsor Blue, or Prussian Blue, that'd be fine. And now we've got an area there that's very dark. Now I'm adding more Prussian Blue now to make that area uh, a little cooler so we have cool areas um, dark areas and warm areas you see the one picking up that dark there and then it goes very dark again there and just spread that I like the idea of spreading that and just creating a textured feel to that there we are that's good and um, then we have the inside of this is extremely dark and what I want to do I want to pick up plenty of blue Windsor blue or Prussian blue color and that is going to sit up into that apex of that arch and that's going to head down like that That's lovely and we then create the you don't actually see the underside of that but I'm just putting it putting in a secondary uh, touch just to try and shape that edge up that's it now touch more water not too much because we've got these areas just add a touch more water to that because I'm making them darker but I need them to show the varying tones in that arch that sh as it shines through see the way I'm doing that so that's it's it's extremely dark 
And as we come into the lower area, we add a little more water because although it is dark, it's somewhat lighter because there's a little bit of light heading in and around the figure. Like that. And that, a little darker in the lower area perhaps. Like that. Mm -hmm. A bit more red, a bit more Windsor or Prussian, and that then picks up that corner there. Brilliant. Just soften that just a touch, that's it. See how you've got the punch underneath that uh, that arch, a real dark feel, um, and that's what we're looking for, really. Well, if you would like to make a small contribution to the running of my channel then all you need to do at the bottom of your screen click on the thanks you then slide the slider along to the amount as little or as much as you wish and click buy and send you then fill in your details and you're done I thank you very much in advance. Now finally, just before we finish, we need to enhance some of these areas too. There's a nice dark area there. And another little dark area there. That really is um, part of that arch work that um, that really um, makes a real difference to the overall effect and there we're going a little blue now and less intense there we go just to, so as we can see the edge in there a little bit of additional brick work that's quite a thick wall that that area there's a bit of a touch of light color there there we are and then little bits of detail here just got to watch we don't um, put in too much because that would destroy the light effect so Yeah. we don't want to do that that is for sure don't want to destroy, don't want to, uh, destroy the feeling of light and of course some little lines then just to depict two little sections that um, that are really um, the shadows on the undersides of some of the brickwork little touches little trying to remember perspective of course because that plays a big part in this there we go I think we're getting there with that. I don't think there's too much more to do, to be fair. Um, yep. Don't want to do too much to that up there. I'm wondering whether that should be just a, a tone darker. So I'm using a rather small brush, but I'm hoping 
if I can just to tone that back. Let's use a larger brush than that. And we'll put a bit of light red in that. Let's, let's just go with the, the light red tone. There you go, that's better. So it is in sunlight, but it's not... Um, it's... Um, is not really particularly strong that's what I'm trying to depict there just so as it get you know it doesn't show up to the eye because the eye needs to think doesn't need to be drawn out of picture here we are yeah I'm pretty much happy with that and then of course comes the little touches in the foreground which are there again same mix um, and we've got a warm tone there um, right it'll come down there like that very dark section on that wall that's shadowed but then of course we come into more blue because along here is another dark section where the wall is here we are yep so what I'm going to do I'm going to line all of this up along the top which is quite a what a task, there you go. Creating a sense of very dark area there to, to light up the lighter tones of the stone really. Because that's got quite a bit of light on that stone here and there. And that, I think, shows it off particularly well where you can see the real light areas against the shadow work there you go look at that really see that the sense of light on that the top of that wall that's what I'm looking for just about see the, the 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 lovely light that um, that those stones are um, in there and then a real dark wash again right into the foreground to give that real sense of sunlight go really loving the way the light is hitting that bottom there how do we go here oh it goes across there like that and like that see it and this is also the same nice and dark out into that sunlit area and that finishes fairly cleanly there I think yep clean the brush and this is going to be cobalt blue now isn't that amazing how all of a sudden I decide to change from Prussian to cobalt to get that additional shadow like that and I think it was a good choice and do you know what I'm going to do I'm going to put cobalt into this other area here just for the hell of it starting off in the depth of that 
and then pulling that across but then I'm extending that beyond the original shadow like that so we've got secondary touch see how it's lightened up there very happy very happy indeed with the way this has gone and then we have a blue shadow there this is cobalt again another cobalt shadow there another one there and this is cobalt there we are good now I'm in danger of too much of a good thing so I'm going to leave it at that remove the surround and sign it up well there it is I've taken the surround away as you can see um, and I'm just going to sign up and I'm signing up in the paint I've used as always in the bottom right hand corner this time um, doesn't really make a big difference but um, just feel that balances the picture um, particularly well and quite a bold signature because it's quite a bold painting so that can uh, can enhance the feeling of uh, a real bold uh, feel that we've got there really uh, just one or two little edges there required just where it stands up good so that is uh, Clathony Castle sorry Clathony Priory just over the borders into uh, Wales the Bracken Beacons um, painted um, from um, a pencil sketch that I did on site as reference and I did take a photograph but it's really working from that pencil sketch and um, I'm pretty happy with that I think it's come off um, particularly well if you wish to subscribe to my YouTube channel then all you need to do is to click on the link the bottom right hand corner any stage during the painting um, and click subscribe you will just it won't cost you anything you've just uh, received notifications when I upload more videos